The most powerful person on earth is someone who lives as a servant unto God and does everything that they can to make other people's lives better. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So we can fight with everything that we think we do wrong and all these temptations we have and fight with sin and feel guilty and condemned all the time, or we can have a whole new focus. We can get up every day and say, today I'm going to live to love. And if you're full of love, full of caring for other people, full of really wanting to serve God with all of your heart, then there's not going to be any room for the bad stuff to get in. And so if I, if I purpose to be patient with people, then there's no room for the impatience to operate in me. You've got what it takes. You are brilliant. You are absolutely amazing. You are created in the image of God. There is so much good stuff in you that you are just about to pop open with goodness. You've got what it takes. And if you don't believe that you can do this, then you're never going to do it. You can live to love other people. And you do it for God. You don't do it for you. You don't do it for what you get out of it. Yes, you do it to make other people happy, but even that should be a second motive. Our first motive is to do it for God, to say thanks to Him for everything that He's done to us. How many of you want to show appreciation to God for everything that He's done for you? You, you want to say, thank you, Jesus. Well, how many ways can you do that? We can say, thank you, Jesus, but there are millions of ways that we can do it if we simply will learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. And you know something I do tell myself every day when I'm praying? I say things like, you know, God, I'm no better than anybody else. It's not going to hurt me at all to do things for people. Show me people that need help. And I'm not just talking about like this kind of help. I'm talking about like in my daily life. I want to do the same things that I tell you all to do. Otherwise, I don't think it's got any power. If I just stand up here and preach to you and I don't have any kind of life backing it up, then I think it's void and useless and without power. Let me tell you something. The most powerful things that you do in your life are the things that are done in secret. Did you hear me? I said the most powerful things that you do in your life are the little things that you do in secret for somebody else that nobody ever knows but you and God. But let me tell you something, your reward comes from God. Amen. Amen. Verse 7, but he stripped himself of all privileges. I'm in Philippians 2, 7. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant and a slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. And after he appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Now, you know, doing something for somebody is pretty easy if you feel like it and you want to and you've got plenty of time and plenty of money and a whole lot of what they need anyway. But if it becomes a deeper sacrifice, then we have to be willing not to get on a cross and die, but to let our flesh go to the cross and die. Because your flesh will fight against you. Even though you have the good in you, and there's a desire in there to obey God and to do what's right, you can count on it, your flesh is going to fight against you, at least until you get very well practiced in these areas. And it's always harder in the beginning of anything than it is later on. I don't have that much difficulty forgiving people now because I totally get the whole spiritual principle behind it. But I went through years of fighting with that thing and it would be so hard for me to forgive people and not only forgive them, but then to see them somewhere and treat them decent or not to talk about them behind their back and tell everybody what they had done to me. Now that's hard. Have you ever been mad at somebody and you heard somebody talking about what a great person they were? 
And let me ask you, was it impossible for you to keep your mouth shut? And say, well, let me tell you a few things that you may not know. That was a hard one for me to get over. Like, yeah, they really are sweet, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless them. They're just a wonderful person. Mm. So that means dying to self. That's the cross that we carry, not to live a selfish, self-centered, self-absorbed life. Thank God we don't have to go get on a cross and shed our blood and die. Our sins are paid for. We've been redeemed. We've been set free. And we're free not only to enjoy our lives, but the greatest thing is we're free to help everybody else enjoy theirs. Doesn't it make you happy today that you're free to bring joy to somebody else in their life? I hope I'm making you happy today because the happier I make you, the happier I'm going to be. Amen? Now watch this. Here comes reward. Verse 9. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed upon him the name that is above every name, that in and at the name of Jesus every knee must bow. Now because he humbled himself, became a servant, didn't consider that this equality he had with God was something that he had to grasp onto and hold onto, but he made himself a servant. Because of that, there was given unto him a name above every name that is so full of power that still to this day, when the name of Jesus is spoken, there is an anointing that is released and demonic forces tremble and shake. And you know what I found out? The most powerful person on earth is someone who lives as a servant unto God and does everything that they can to make other people's lives better. That's the powerful person. If you want to add power to your life, just start doing more for other people. If you're in ministry and you want to add power to your pulpit in your private life, behind the scenes, in secret, do everything that you can to bless somebody else's life. And whoo, when you mention the name of Jesus, something's going to happen. Faith only works by love. I can believe for great things to happen, but if I have no love walk. Galatians 5 says faith is energized by love. My faith has no energy without love. Don't go through life doing the least that you can. Do the most that you can. Little things. When you go out and eat, don't give people the littlest, tiniest, down to the penny tip that you can give them. <laughs> and whatever you do, do not leave a gospel track and no money. <laughs> oh, that is bad, bad, bad to the bone bad. And don't be a rude Christian. Don't go in a restaurant with your cross hanging around your neck and your earphones plugged in. And when you don't get everything exactly the way you want it, be rude and ridiculous. I remember going to a restaurant one time in St. Louis after a conference, and I'm tired when my conferences are done, and really the first thing I want to go do is get a good meal and have some good fellowship and just enjoy and we made a reservation at a restaurant, and when we got there, they told us they didn't take reservations. It's like, well, you took ours. <laughs> so now they said, well, you're going to have to wait 45 minutes. And we're like, well, you, we asked for reservations. You gave us, well, we don't take reservations. Well, you need to tell your employees that because they took ours. <laughs> that wasn't getting us anywhere. So we waited, 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 waited. Finally got a table. It was really crowded in there. And there was like, I think, 10 or 12 of us at this big, long table. And we were all dressed up. Dave had on a suit, and I had on jazzy clothes. And so this girl came over to, to take our drink order, and we told her what we wanted. And she came back with this huge tray of drinks, and she leaned over and dumped the thing on Dave. 
just coffee, tea all, all over him and his nice suit. And so she was just, she was just a nervous wreck. Well, Dave said, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. He went to the manager. He said, look, I don't want her to get in trouble. This is not her fault. It's too crowded in here. She didn't have the right room to walk behind me. I don't want her to get in trouble. He went out of his way to make sure that that girl didn't get in trouble. Well, when she came back, when she came back with the second tray of drinks, She stood behind Dave and she looked at me and she said, I'm so sorry. She said, you see, I was so nervous because I watch you on TV. <laughs> and I, in my heart, I'm going, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, God, thank you that I didn't act bad. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. I tell you, this being on TV thing has got its responsibility. Can you imagine the damage that I could have done? And you know, I remember something that God spoke to me when I first, when my TV program first started really doing well. He said, I want you to always remember that however many people you can help, that's exactly how many you can hurt. And so we need to realize that just our daily attitude can help people it can hurt people. It can lead people to Christ or it can drive them away from Christ. Amen. Acts 10, 38 says, See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and in particular curing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's Acts 10, 38. I love that about Jesus that he just went about doing good. Jesus our amazing, powerful, awesome God and Savior just got up every day, had breakfast with the boys, and went about doing good. Well, you know, I've decided that I can went about doing good. You don't even have to have a college degree to do that. You don't have to go to seminary. You can just went about to the grocery store, in traffic, in your neighborhood, at school, at work. You just went about and served the Lord with gladness. Be a blessing everywhere that you go. This is Christianity 101 made simple. For God so loved the world that he gave. He cared for the poor. They always carried money with them to give to the poor. And Paul, after many years not being with the other apostles because he didn't know if they would receive him because he had formerly been persecuting the church, when he finally did present himself to the other apostles to see if they had any instructions for him, the Bible says that they did not require him to do anything at all other than they just reminded him to make sure that he helped the poor which thing he said I was very happy to do. Now, when we think about the poor, what do we really envision? Are poor people just the people who live on the streets and have no money, have no food, don't have proper clothing? Yes, those are poor people, but I've taken a new definition of poor because it gives me a wider base of people to help. And I don't ever want to run out of people to help. So I've decided that anybody poor, at least as far as I'm concerned, is somebody who has a need and has no way of meeting that need themselves. A poor person is someone who has less than you do. And you know why I've decided to look at it like that? Because although they might not be poor in the true definition of the poor, I remember when Dave and I never had the money to go out and eat. I remember when I never got a new outfit, maybe for a year. I remember when I had to take a calculator to the grocery store with me and I could not spend one penny 
over $35 a week for groceries. And when I got to the checkout lane, if I had more than that $35 worth or $70 for two weeks, because we only went every two weeks, then I had to start taking stuff back and putting it back where it belonged. And it was in that grocery store that God taught me a lot of lessons about his nature and how he wants us to be excellent. Little things you've heard me talk about, putting my grocery cart back where it belonged, when I got something in my cart and I got to the checkout lane and realized I couldn't keep it, not sticking the lettuce in the cleanser, but going and putting it back where it belonged. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you want to go to the school of the Holy Ghost, he will teach you and use you everywhere that you go. You don't have to go to church to find God. He's everywhere. And you don't necessarily have to go to Bible college to learn how to minister. All you have to do is say, God, teach me in my everyday life how I can serve you and do everything that you want me to do. This is what the church is missing. Being a Christian is about more than going and parking your little behind on a pew every Sunday morning for 45 minutes while you sleep through half of it and can't wait for it to get over and go out and not do anything for anybody else. That is not Christianity. And I hope nobody misunderstands this. I love local church. I think it is amazing. But I want to say something. I want you to take it in the right spirit. I think sometimes we make too much out of, I go to church. And not enough out of, I live the life. And that's what we need to do. Are you a Christian? Well, I go to church. Well, that doesn't tell me you're a Christian. Some of the meanest people in the world are in church. <laughs> I've had the benefit of their meanness over the years, let me tell you. And we need to go to church to be instructed, to fellowship with other people, to learn, to be accountable to somebody. But it is useless if we just keep it in the church. We don't just act like God on Sunday morning and then go act like the devil the rest of the week. <laughs> Peter, do you love me? Help somebody. Matthew 20, verse 20. Then the mother of Zebedee's children came up to him with her sons. And kneeling down, she worshiped him and said, could you do me a favor? And he said, well, what is it that you want? And she said, give orders that these two sons of mine might sit one at your right hand and one at your left when you come into your kingdom. But Jesus replied, you don't even realize what you're asking. <laughs> Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Now, now look here. If you want to sit with Jesus, <laughs> then you got to be willing to be a servant like Jesus was a servant. This woman didn't know what she was talking about. She wanted her sons to have titles and positions and to be well thought of. And Jesus said, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Are you able to live the self-sacrificing life that I'm going to live? Are you able to forget yourself and meet the needs of other people? Isn't that what Jesus did? So what are we really saying when we say, I want to be like Jesus? I mean, it can't just be this floaty, cloud-like, oh, <laughs> yes, just make me like you, Jesus. <laughs> it's all about you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do well with that kind of stuff. I mean, look, we're having fun in here, but here's the bad news. you got to go home. <laughs> and when you do, I want you to go home and act like you got something. <clears throat> I want you to go home and be so changed that next year, if anybody hears I'm anywhere in the vicinity, they'll pay you to go back. And get some more of that God help you got the last time because you came home in better condition than you were when you left. <laughs> Let 
you do not know what you're asking for. <clears throat> he said to them, you will drink the cup that I drink, but seats at my right and left hand, those are not mine to give, but they are for those for whom it has been ordained and prepared by my Father. And I love this part. Then when the other 10 disciples heard this, they got indignant. They're like, well, who do you think you are? We're, we're, those seats are going to be ours, surely. <laughs> you guys are way down the list when it comes to those positions. Huh. That's what it means to be indignant, you know. It's like, <laughs> who do you think you are? <laughs> See, I've had a lot of practice at all this. And Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers and the Gentiles lord it over them, and great men hold them in subjection, tyrannizing them. Verse 26, Not so shall it be among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Good, I got three people clapping over here. And what does this mean? It doesn't mean that you have to go scrub the floor before you leave, although if it needs to be scrubbed, you're not too good to. But that doesn't mean that that's what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking is for myself and for all of us to realize the great importance of where we're at in society today and what is going on in the world today. And there is no hope for society without us. It's getting darker. And when I say us, I mean God working through us. If I said to any of you, how many of you believe that God is the answer? You'd all say yes. But how do we think that people are going to see God? Well, yes, we'd love for him to appear. I'd love that. Jesus, come on down here and straighten this out. <laughs> but until he does, he's got us. We've got him, but we're all he's got. You and me, we are all that God has got. <clears throat> and, it, and if we are going to be easily offended and touchy and keep a list of every little wrong thing that everybody does to us and get out in society and rant and rave on people and be impatient with every little mistake that they make, how can we expect anybody to want what we have? How can we expect the church to do anything but decrease in size week by week by week? And worldwide, and I'm sure this church is growing, and there are many churches that are growing, but worldwide, there are less people going to church now than at any other time in history. And that is spooky scary. And you know why? Because a lot of people don't really see anything real about the life of a Christian. And I am determined that as long as I've got breath, I am going to teach people, if we're going to do this, then let's not let it be in name only. Let's bear the fruit and live the life. Amen? I mean, we are living in desperate times. Don't pray for God to get you out of the place where you work because you're the only Christian there. Well, God, I just can't stay here any longer. I'm the only Christian here. Well, did you pray for God to use you? <laughs> well, good. Then he puts you somewhere where you're needed. <laughs> now just get there and forget about your sweet little self and just be a light in a dark place. Show everybody the love of God. And when you need to get out of there, God will get you out of there if you need to get out of there. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I needed this today. I don't know about you, but I needed this today. You know, Acts 10, 38 is actually one of my favorite scriptures. It says that Jesus went about doing good. You know, that's just so beautifully simple to me that we can just so improve our life and the lives of other people if we will just simply get up every day and say, God, show me who I can be good to today. You know, Jesus said that we should love others as he loves us. The greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as you love yourself.
I've just been wondering lately, what is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. Seeing the world is awesome. It's always a great adventure. Because the kids are so amazing. I do this because God put it in my heart to help others. Because it's life changing. We love it. It's awesome. Because it's really fun. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. Ben je niet op je mondje gevallen en draag je het hart op je tong? Kost dat jou je vriendschappen? Woorden hebben veel macht. Joyce Meyer heeft een boek geschreven rondom dit thema. Ik met mijn grote mond. Hiermee leer je de juiste dingen uit te spreken of juist jouw mening voor je te houden. Je kunt het boek Ik met mijn grote mond bestellen via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Joyce Meyer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Ik hou niet zo van lezen. Er zijn ook dvd's. En wat nog meer? Themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meyer Info- en Productbroschure. Met een overzicht van alle boeken en DVD's. Had dat dan meteen gezegd? Die kan je online bekijken of bestellen. Kosteloos. Met alle informatie over de dagelijkse overdenkingen, Facebook, nieuwsbrief. Niet slecht. Bestel nu ook de Joyce Meyer Info- en Productbroschure. Via joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure of telefonisch via 026. 2022 100. Super!